We'll start our construction of the head by looking at the materials and cutting guide and the templates we will need for this part of the project. So the head has pieces that are cut out of both medium weight and lightweight chipboard. So you'll find a section labeled head on both of those uh, pages. Um, many if not most of the pieces are cut from templates but some are not and we'll talk about the, those that uh, rely on templates first and then we'll talk about the other ones. So for the head there are several pages that have templates on uh, them that you will need. Let's just talk for a moment in general about the templates. When you cut them out, if you can cut them out of uh, cardstock weight, uh, I think that's better, but it, you know, cut them out of whatever weight you have. And when you cut them, leave the line behind so that you are cutting on the insides of these lines all the time. Now the um, Materials and Cutting Guide tells you how wide to cut for each of these pieces and that's helpful so that you don't get the template skewed or off kilter when you go to put them on. So follow that width. For, for instance, if this piece says it, it's cut four and a half inches wide, cut that four and a half inch wide piece and then put the template down on top of it and that way you're assured of getting um, the, a piece that's square and correctly cut. Now you'll pay attention some of these say they say the weight of the chipboard on them medium weight is the thicker weight 1 16th inch and light weight uh, we'll see in a few minutes uh, that's about half that thickness or 32nd of an inch thick so each template will tell you how many pieces to cut and out of what weight of chipboard. It also indicates what uh, direction the stiffness of the chipboard should be going and if I have any pieces that aren't marked uh, that usually means it doesn't matter or I'll specify it as we're talking here. So uh, let's start here by looking at this top one, the lower jaw. We're going to cut one on the black line and one on the red line and that means that we have one that's cut all the way to the end and then a second one that is cut, it's a quarter inch shorter and it just goes to that red line. You'll also want to make sure that you mark the center line on each one. You can see I have a little tick mark right there. And then here the holes on the larger piece only. At this point when you're cutting them out just mark for these holes by making a little uh, plus sign inside of those holes. You can punch them on your template and then just make a little cross on them. They should be uh, centered uh, in the piece of chipboard. Next let's talk about this upper jaw. It's again out of medium weight chipboard. We're going to cut two of those and they're both cut the same length. I've marked my tick mark for the center and I've marked holes again just on one piece. It says here holes on one piece only. And then for the inner jaw there's four pieces in total. Two are cut to the red line, two are cut to the black line and we'll have to do a little trimming when we actually install these pieces but the two longer ones go for the lower jaw and the two shorter ones will actually work on the upper jaw. So they again have their center lines marked. So on the second page of templates for uh, the jaw we have two pieces here that you can cut them as templates but actually what I did was I just used these measurements and drew them out on the chipboard rather than cutting them as templates. Now one thing to make sure of is notice these red arrows and the dashed lines here. 
these are because of the limitations of our paper size here I've the like this first one here is actually 12 inches long but it's drawn to six inches and then we just flip it to make a, a mirror image so here is that top one you can see if I put it right here on top that it comes down here and then we would just flip it and there's the mirror image on the other side to give us our 12 inches long piece I've got a marked center line here and punched an eighth inch hole uh, for the um, faucet knob to go through at the end and it's played the dimensions are listed there as well and then we have a second piece for the inside of the lower jaw again it is only drawn um, half it is drawn it's actually eight inches long here's the center line on with that red arrow and if I put this on here you can see this side has its center line marked and then both pieces are flexible along their length that means that they easily bend like this and they're both out of lightweight chipboard and then our lower jaw base that's medium weight chipboard there's nothing very special about this the stiffness is indicated and we again have our center line that we mark now we have some head templates we'll start here this is the back of a head at the top and the stiffness you can see this arrow is going this way that means that this piece is flexible in this direction because it's going to need to bend around the head it also has a little notch cut out here that I just used the larger size of my crop dial to cut and that's to allow the wires for the light to go through it's important that this inside dimension here be two and a quarter inches so it fits around the interior box next we have a couple of head support pieces cut out of medium weight chipboard uh, the direction is not important for those so it's not specified and then down here we have the head and the head is approximately 13 inches long um, it's, it's again where we make a uh, we have to fold and make another template so here's what I did I copied I printed it out and I cut it out and then I traced it onto another piece of paper and taped it on the in the middle made sure I had a nice straight line here and actually the center portion up here is straight as well so now I have a, an, a large template that I can use now this template is about 13 inches long so you can't fit it on a 12 inch piece of chipboard going this you have to kind of put it at a little bit of an angle and you'll still want it to be as uh, so that it's as flexible as possible on that chipboard um, and so here is the the piece that I cut out I marked center on the top and the bottom and I've marked for the um, the hole for the faucet knob it's not on this original one that I had here and then I've done some eighth inch scoring this is out of lightweight chipboard and I just put it on my scoreboard and kept it parallel and scored every eighth inch until I for the length of this part in the middle the ends don't need to be scored and that will just help us make sure we get it to bend the way we want it to and I would do that scoring before I cut these um, inch and a quarter circle cutouts and those can be cut with the smallest sized circle die of the Tim Holtz uh, size circle dies so that's the head and then you'll notice there's one more thing indicated on here and that's this green shaded area and that we're going to cut out of medium weight chipboard and 
this is the piece I've cut and it is less than 12 inches you want it to be flexible along its length here so um, it's its size is approximately a quarter of inch, inch wide. It's not necessary to be exact for this one, but it's measured so that it sits back from the edge of the head a sixteenth of an inch. And this will just give us a gluing surface when we put the back of the head on. So that's what this little green part is. And if you cut out your head first, if you want to, you can just cut this out uh, again. Um, after you've finished with the head, just cut out the green piece and use that. And again, make sure you mark for center. And there's just one last piece that we'll need eventually for the head. It's the inside of the mouth. And I put it on this page that has uh, mostly has the fins on it. And uh, it's cut out of lightweight chipboard. Uh, the stiffness is going in this direction so that it bends like like this and uh, I've done some scoring and I'll talk some more about that when we um, actually get to the inside mouth. Now the cutting guide also has some pieces that are just uh, rectangular dimensions. This lower jaw support is out of medium weight chipboard and then under a uh, lightweight chipboard there are a bunch of these other um, uh, rectangular shapes and for all of them you want the flexibility to be along that long edge because they're all wrapping around something. And then out of medium weight chipboard there's a variety of circles that are needed here. Um, the jaw circles are an inch and a quarter and if you have the uh, Tim Holtz sized circle die, the smallest die will cut an inch and a quarter circle. And then to cut these other ones that are kind of odd dimensions, one and three sixteenths and one and one eighths, I have this EK Success uh, circle cutter. And if you take your time and go around, oh, like 20 or 25 times, you can cut through medium weight chipboard. So I use that for any of my odd um, uh, size circles that I'm cutting out of chipboard that I don't have a die for. I find this very handy. Just take your time and you can cut uh, this 1 16th inch thick medium weight chipboard using this uh, circle cutter. So I think that's all of our pieces so we're ready to get started with the construction. We start our lower jaw by using the lower jaw top piece which is the one that is a quarter of an inch longer. It was cut on the black lines and we'll also need one of our inner jaw pieces. Now I've got my uh, markings for my uh, teeth holes here on the top so I'm going to flip this over and here on the back I've just taken a black magic marker and gone around both edges here and that will help me be able to see to place this inner jaw piece because it is cut slightly smaller and we want to make sure that we can see black and that's easier to see that contrast here uh, to put the inner on top of the outside. Now another thing to check and you may need to trim a little bit, I did not need to but it's possible, is that the inner piece should be about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the outside here. So on this end you'll see about a sixteenth of an inch. Now going around you won't have quite a sixteenth of an inch on showing on the inside and the outside because we're just going to be insetting a piece of that lightweight chipboard. So it's, it'll be more like a thirty-second of an inch on each side. But just make sure you see some black on both sides there and then we'll just take some wet glue and attach the inner to the outer and I'll look to make sure that I line up my center tick marks 
and that everything is uh, lined properly. So I'll put some wet glue on that and I'll get those two pieces attached together. Now that we have the inner piece attached to the outside here, we can go ahead and punch our holes. And I'm just using the smaller setting on my crop -a dial And I've set it so that it will make a hole that is centered at a quarter of an inch because this piece is a half inch wide. So then I can just go along and line up each one of those marks that I made and punch all the way around. Now we want them to be fairly close to the center going this way but there is no set measurement. They're about every half an inch but uh, the fish is meant to be kind of scraggly toothed so it's not important that they are exactly um, uh, half an inch or any kind of measurement in between. So I'll go ahead and punch all of those holes. So I have all of my holes punched now and this is the paper that I've chosen to go on top of my lower jaw so I'm just going to flip it over to the back side. This side is a little busy but hopefully you'll be able to see this and what I'll do is just put some uh, glue around on these holes here and probably some score tape just on these ends down here and put it down and then I want to leave about a 3 8 of an inch border on either side of the curved areas and then I'll just cut it even with the square parts down on the inside here. So but leave 3 8 on the outside. So I'll get that cut and attached and then I'll be back. Now here I have my paper attached and it's important to note that it got attached to the um, upper side. So here you, I think you can see there's the inner piece right here. So the paper is attached on this flush top side. And now I'll just hold my crop -a dial kind of upside down so the punching part can fit inside of each one of these holes. And I'll go ahead and punch the holes through the paper. I think you can see I've started to do that right here. So I'll continue to do that all the way around. Next we'll attach our lower jaw outside to this piece that we've been working on. Now the lower jaw outside has one straight edge and one edge that kind of angles down and then back up again. That side that angles down and back up is the side that we want to attach to the outside of our lower jaw piece. And there, we'll put it right on that little channel that we've got there and we'll line up our center marks. Now I think it's advisable to work on one side at a time so I'll put glue right along that um, edge there and attach one side and let it set up for a few minutes and then go ahead and attach the other side. Now if you end up having a little bit of an overhang on either side or both sides, don't worry about it, just let it overhang. Now while the glue is setting up on this piece that we just glued together, we can go ahead and put together the other part of our uh, lower jaw and again we'll use uh, uh, an inner jaw piece and this is the shorter of the two lower jaw pieces. I've blackened around the edges here so that I can make sure I can see a little bit of a reveal there. Now before I attach this down I'm going to just put it, attach it with some temporary adhesive and make sure I get my center points lined up there and then just come down on either side 
and I want to make a mark so that this inner piece again is a sixteenth of an inch shorter than this larger uh, square rectangle that we have there. So I'll just take a, you know, you can take a piece of the medium weight chipboard or you can just eyeball it or, you know, whatever it takes to get that to be a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the larger piece. And then I'll just cut these two pieces off and go ahead and glue these two together. And then once the glue is set up on both of our pieces, we can go ahead and join these two. Make sure you can see a center mark on both sides uh, and on the outside here because here we'll put glue in this channel and but we'll make sure that we line up our center mark because the uh, side piece will definitely overhang down here and we'll just let that overhang because we'll be trimming it off here in a few minutes so just put glue in this outside channel here and attach these two pieces starting with that this center mark that's right here and then allow that to set up Once that outer piece is set up, we can go ahead and put in the inner piece. Now I have this situated so that I'm looking at the bottom of the piece here. And I have my inner jaw piece here situated so that the flat part is on the top. And it will go in just like this so that the flat side faces the bottom. Now I've also made sure to that I can see my center mark everywhere and this will just fit in and get glued in these two channels that we have on either side and fit around in there. So you'll, you'll have to do both the top and the bottom at once but you can work on just like the left and then do the right if that will work out better for you. I think that's what I will do because it's just too much to keep control of at one time. So first I'll do one side and then I'll put glue on the top and bottom and do the other side and make sure I let that set up and dry. So once the jaw construction has set up, we're going to add a couple of little pieces right in here. And I've just taken my medium weight chipboard, the piece that we had that was 1 by 8 for the lower jaw supports, and I've cut two little pieces that are 5 8 inch wide by 7 8 tall. 5 8 inch wide by 7 8 inch tall. And then I'll just do a little dry fit in here and make sure that they fit. You don't want them going past the edge here. So if you need to trim it off a little bit, go ahead and do that. But on this side, on this side I need to trim it off just a little bit and just check on the other side. You can always measure this first. Um, to see and let me check my other side here now on this side it's it's fine maybe just a hair long but on this side I need to trim it just a little bit so make sure you don't go past this edge here and then just glue those two little pieces in place and allow them to set up Now once we have these little pieces in, we can go ahead and attach our decorative paper down, the tabs that we have here. Now I've added some score tape on the long uh, straight parts and then I've just snipped using my scissors about every 3 16 of an inch or so around the outside there 
And then on the inside, I put a piece of score tape on this little tab here. And then I'll just cut a diagonal out from that corner. And then I'll continue around cutting little 3 16 inch slots, which I've already done. And then I can just kind of put it down on my work surface and train these to all want to go to the inside. And then where we have the score tape, we'll use that to attach. And then we'll just use some wet glue on the uh, other little tabs and hold them in place and let those all set up. And uh, so I'll get those tabs put down and then I'll be back. Now once you have all of your tabs fastened down, you want to come and trim off these ends. Now there's some overhang here at the bottom and there may be a little overhang here at the top. Just take your scissors and line up that and trim that so it's even. And repeat that on the other side. So now we have kind of an angled piece right here. Now let's measure and cut the pieces that will fill in on these spots. We won't attach them yet, but let's get them cut and put them in a safe place. So I just have my piece here of the lower jaw supports and I'm going to just fit it inside here and then just make a couple of tick marks. I think that's easier than trying to measure here and you know how um, far to cut that off. And then just in case this uh, left one is different from the right one, you go ahead and mark left and right and get both of those cut. So I have these two pieces cut and they're just dry fit inside. You can see I've marked them outside left and with an up arrow and then on the inside I don't know if you can see that, I put an L on this side and an R on the other side just so I would remember which side is left and right. And now um, this is an odd shaped piece that goes in here. It's going to be about 7 eighths of an inch tall here and it's kind of slanted. So just kind of hold it up in here and Fit it inside, it's a little hard for me to show you this because of the angle here, but just kind of make some tick marks so that you can get that odd shape piece sized for each one. And then once you have those four little pieces cut, just uh, set them aside in a safe place and we'll have them ready for later. Now we're ready to add decorative paper to the outside and the inside of this lower jaw. And there's another template page for this and it has one for the lower jaw outside, one for the lower jaw inside, and then later we'll worry about this lower jaw base. Now there's a dashed line on each of these pieces here and that's because we need to have some tabs to fold underneath. Now for the one that goes on the outside, this tab is a half an inch long and then on the inside it's only three-eighths of an inch long. Now you may want to just cut these out of some uh, scrap card stock just to test their fit out, make sure everything is working for you. And if you do that, just cut them even with the dashed line. So for instance, here is my trial for the one to go on the outside. And you can see I've cut it to this size here, just here on the top. And I just made it 12 inches long. I just attached another little piece. This is some 11 inch paper that I had. So I just uh, added another little scrap here. And then I can take this over here and test that fit. 
and see if it's going to work. And that looks real good for, for mine and hopefully it will for yours too. And then I did the same thing for the second one, for the inside. Now here we've got some tabs that bend back because this piece actually comes in and goes right around the front of those two places right there. So these were just testers. When you cut this out of the decorative paper, make sure you cut this this whole length. Um, so that is on this end it's one and one sixteenth plus a half an inch and here it's inch and three eighths. And then again, this is similar to how we did the chipboard where the templates are drawn um, with an arrow here to indicate that we need to flip them over to make that longer piece here. Now you can either just draw them or cut out templates, how, whatever works for you, and then cut them out of your uh, decorative paper. So I'll get my paper cut and then I'll be back. So I have both of my pieces of decorative paper cut and I've done a little inking. I'm using um, tea dye distress ink and vintage photo, just a little double inking. And I did ink a little bit around the edges on my jaw as well. And then I've prepped with by putting a tape on the top half. I'm going to use glue on the, the tabs at the bottom and I've done that on on both pieces so that the top is has score tape and the bottom I'll use some glue is what I'm planning at this point. So I'm going to put the inside one on first and when I do that I'll, I've got a center mark here and I'll take half of the score tape off and start in the center and get that lined up and then work my way uh, left and right here and uh, fasten that down. Now the, the overage hangs to the bottom and the bottom is the unfinished side at this point. So that's the plan here. So once you've gone all the way around, if you have a little overage on one or both sides, just go ahead and give that a little haircut so it's even there. And then I'm just going to do a little inking. This will be pretty deep inside of the mouth and I don't think it will show but um, just in case I'd rather get a little ink on there. And then I think we can put some a score tape instead of just glue on here. So I'm going to just run a piece of uh, 3 8 inch score tape along there and then I'll cut some um, 3 16 inch tabs and put them down. So I'll go ahead and do that next. So I added some score tape all around and I made one cut right here in the corner so I can turn that piece down this way. And then it's straight here for about an inch so I just I didn't make any little cuts there. And now here's where I made my 3 16 inch cuts and I'll just kind of gradually bring it over and then I can press these down and give them a good burnishing. Now sometimes with these small tabs they end up needing some glue and or that um, but eventually the base will come on here and hold those tabs down. So I'll give these a burnish and then I'll be back. So here's the inside all finished. I gave these a burnish and then I did a little inking here on this bottom edge. And now I'm ready to put the outside piece on. And I did add an extra piece of score tape down here for the tabs. But to start with I'm just going to put this and put it on the top edge and we'll just leave those tabs hanging, that tab hanging for right now. So this piece gets installed with the, if you're looking at it this way, 
the uh, there's one edge that's completely straight that goes towards the bottom that's the tabs and this side that has the angle cuts is the side that you line up with the top of that jaw so I'll go ahead and get that installed and I've of course inked that edge before I uh, uh, start so I have that decorative paper installed and now I'm going to trim these ends here what I want to do is come straight till I get to this point and then follow the diagonal now if yours didn't come quite to the ends mine came just to the ends but don't worry because um, the jaw circles will cover up any any kind of little issues there so that's not a problem if it's not perfectly uh, covered at this back end here so I'm just trimming straight across here across the tab part and then on a diagonal for the rest so there's my diagonal and now I'm just going to come straight there and so now we can just set aside the lower jaw for a few minutes